Here at the head coach of the Cavaliers, Jamie Klusman. Coach going on the road again this weekend to take on a limestone team, and they really like to shoot a lot of three-pointers. They do. You know, that's one of the keys. Uh, we have to guard the three-point line. Also, all four of their wins this year have came from playing at home. Uh, so they're a much better team at home than on the road, like most teams are. But, you know, we're going to have our hands full for sure. A win would give your team more road wins than they had all of last season. You're coming off a big road win at LMU. Really faced some adversity in that game. They came back and tied it up. Talk about your club's perseverance there down the stretch and really Peyton Sam's two huge passes there at the end of the game. Yeah, I just think um, outside of Peyton, obviously, um, our players had a lot of experience last year, especially with Caitlin and Nia uh, and KJ with all the injuries that we had. They had to play big minutes for us. Um, so I think last year's, obviously, you'd never want to go through injuries, but if there's any upside to it, I think it's um, helped us this year. Uh, we're a lot more mature out there. And Peyton Sams, that's what she does. You know, she's a floor general. Uh, she's going to pass the ball. She's going to find the open man. And, you know, that's part of the reason we put her in there at the end is, you know, to give another ball handler, point guard mentality out there. And um, it worked in our favor. Well, your other point guard, Caitlin Ross, uh, 14 assists, career high, the most this season by any player in NCAA basketball, regardless of division. It's 27 assists now in the last two games. Yeah, it's pretty incredible. Um, you know, if she's not scoring, which she can score, but uh, she draws a lot of attention from our opponents on the defensive end. So she's going to find the open person. And I think that's another way that um, she has matured from last year to this year is last year, maybe she would have forced a few shots in there, but this year uh, she has the confidence in sharing the ball uh, with her teammates. And, you know, offensively, we're shooting the ball pretty well. So, um, you know, it's confidence with the pass, it's confidence stepping into the pass and knocking down the shot. Um, but like I said, it's incredible. And I imagine it will probably continue from here on out. Meg gets in foul trouble. You need a big game from your senior, and I think that might be the best game Ada's played in a couple months. Yeah, she stepped up big, her and Nia, in the third quarter. Uh, they really set the tone on both ends of the floor for us. Um, you know, I, I kind of joked with Ada and basically said, if you don't look to shoot the ball, I'm not going to play you. Um, joking, but not joking, because she's such a good offensive threat. Felt like she was passing up a lot of shots, so – just had to get, you know, in her head and build that confidence back up. And she came out, she executed, uh, had some really nice post moves, um, some and one plays that really, you know, helped us extend that lead. So we sustained their run. Looking back now to Limestone, two players that really stick up to me when looking at your stat line for this year, Quinn Bird and Reagan McCrary really jump off the page and what the two of them have done from the three point line. Talk about those two a little bit, maybe some of the problems that they'll present your team from a defensive point of view. Yeah, I mean, they're tough matchups because they're so explosive. Um, so they can get to the rim whenever they want, but also they're very consistent three-point shooters. So, you know, if you body them up, try to run them off the three-point line, then they're going to um, blow your doors off and get to the rim. Um, so definitely going to be tough matchups, but uh, hopefully uh, we have um, a plan in place to hopefully slow them down and make someone else step up to make the big plays. Another product of COVID this year, Coach, you're going down day of the game. Uh, you don't have to go real in depth with this, but, but kind of an outline on how the day will go for your team on a pretty pretty decently long trip down to Limestone. Yeah, we got to leave earlier than we've ever left. Um, we're going to stop in Johnson City, pick up some food. Um, it'll be our pregame meal. We'll be eating a little bit earlier than what we would like to do, but we're kind of in a tough spot because there's not a lot to eat between Johnson City and Asheville. Uh, with the two o'clock tip off time, we're nervous about stopping in Asheville because of, you know, just being a busier place. So uh, we'll plan on taking some snacks and hopefully um, get some more energy put into their bodies by the time we, we get ready to tip off. But, you know, it's just another road test for us. It's just a test in general. Uh, we can't use it as an excuse. We've got to find ways to just roll off the bus and play. Keys to victory against the Saints. Uh, defend the three-point line, attack their zone, and I think rebounding is going to be big on the offensive end. Coach, you've won eight in a row. Let's keep it going to make it nine. Fans, you can tune in Saturday, tip off at two, WLSDradio.com, or if you're in the Wise County area, you can listen on 92.5. Coach, thank you for your time and good luck. Thank you.